Welcome back Facebook. I'm Joe Malandrino for the Voice of America for NASDAQ's Facebook Live. And today we are with the Africa Investor Summit. We have executives from U.S. and African stock exchanges and investment funds joining us on set today. Right now we're talking to another two CEOs and man, uh, managing director of exchanges in Africa. Ikao Fidzi is currently the deputy managing director of the Ghana Stock Exchange and Sunil Benimadu is the CEO of the Stock Exchange of Mauritius. Welcome gentlemen to New York City and to the NASDAQ market Thank site. You. Thanks for making time. Thank I know you. it's a busy week with all the African summits in town today. Um, so African trade, economics and leadership, they're important topics in the marketplace right now. Explain to us each, where are the main focuses of your economies and exchanges? Ikaf, you'd like to tell us okay, about Ghana. that's fine. Um, Ghana, you know, is a, it's quite a small country in West Africa. Um, the GDP of uh, maybe 40 billion and above. Mm -hmm. uh, the mainstay of Ghana's economy has been mainly uh, gold in the past, cocoa in the past. Uh, but now we're beginning to go into the oil space where we discovered oil a few years ago. Production started about two years ago. And uh, we just started another production. So uh, the economy is gradually changing to the oil and gas uh, sector. And that's what's going to drive Ghana's economy uh, going uh, forward. Uh, and you've implemented that rather quickly yes. for the exploration. Are you concerned because one of your close neighbors, Nigeria, is moving away from commodity dependency? What makes it different with Ghana? Um, I think it depends on the kind of planning and strategies you put in place in order not to be uh, focusing too much on just one sector and leaving uh, that, that sector. So uh, when you take Ghana, apart from oil and gas uh, coming up, uh, we're still looking at agriculture and looking at other uh, sectors. Cocoa is still our biggest uh, exporter. <laughs> uh, uh, oil is going to come up. And right. um, fortunately, uh, all these things will impact on the market going forward into the future. Right. So Sunil, tell us a little bit about Mauritius. You don't really hear about it as much, but it has a very unique economy relative to others in Africa. Yeah, in fact, Mauritius has witnessed a fundamental transformation of its economy. Uh, Let's say only uh, 30 years ago, Mauritius was essentially an agricultural focused economy with sugar as its backbone uh, in terms of contribution to GDP. Uh, but today, Mauritius is a very well diversified economy with a, a number of sectors contributing to the country's GDP. We have financial services, tourism, we've got uh, agriculture, uh, and more and more we get getting into business process outsourcing. So. It's, it's been a, a, a very s a big success story in Africa. In fact, uh, we've grown over the last uh, 30 years at an average growth rate of 5% every year. And uh, we are today more and more uh, being used as a platform, uh, uh, as a service platform for investments into different emerging regions of the world, including the large economy like India. Uh, but we're also growingly being used as a service platform to uh, drive investments into Africa today. So Mauritius has, has been, been doing extremely well over the past few years, and we are looking forward to really uh, becoming the service platform for investments into the African and continent. Tell us a, a bit more about the exchange there. How large is it? How many listings do you have? Where do yeah. you see the growth coming from as the economy is expanded to other sectors? Yeah, sure. Uh, the Mauritius Stock Exchange started its operations only 27 years ago. So we started in 1989, and we started as a very small pre-emerging uh, stock exchange with only five listings in those days and a market capitalization of only $100 million uh, 27 years ago. But since then, of course, uh, we've grown quite uh, in a meaningful manner, and uh, we today list about 135 uh, products on our exchange. Our market cap has grown to nearly 12 billion and it's increasing. Uh, we have moved to a fully automated uh, stock exchange infrastructure. And growingly, the interesting thing is, uh, since 2010, we've embarked on what I call a major strategic shift from uh, an equity-centric domestic exchange to a multi-asset class international exchange. And uh, to achieve that strategic shift, we've uh, implemented a number of fundamental uh, regulatory as well as operational transformation. For example, on the operational side, we've set up a multi-currency capital raising, listing, trading, and settlement platform, which would allow an issuer, a local but also an international issuer, to use our platform 
to raise capital in US dollar, in Euro, in British pound, in South African rand and Mauritian rupee, trade and settle in any of these currencies. And this has helped us a lot because since 2010, we've listed uh, nearly 95 new products on exchange. And most of the new products that we've listed have been non-Mauritius companies or non-Mauritius com uh, products. They've been international products. And more importantly, our platform has been used as an important capital raising uh, platform for these issuers. For example, over the last uh, five years, uh, there's been about 3.2 billion US dollars that have been raised by these companies. So in a nutshell, I think our focus going forward is to continue opening up our exchange, attracting more international issuers, and, and try to also think about uh, attracting global order flows to, the, to our platform so as to make it a very attractive inter uh, and interesting uh, listing platform for a number of products. And recently, we've also seen our platform being used as a listing platform for ETFs, exchange traded funds. We've listed, for example, uh, at the beginning of the year, an ETF tracking the S&P 500 in US dollar in Mauritius. We've listed an ETF tracking uh, an S&P index, uh, which uh, focuses on 40, the performance of 40 of the largest uh, global real estate companies. And most recently, we listed an ETF that is tracking uh, investments in Indian sovereign government bonds. Uh, that has to definitely increase trading volume because they're yes. wildly, wildly popular yes. traded investment vehicles here as well. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit more about the Ghana Exchange. Yes, um, the Ghana Stock Exchange is uh, 25 years old. Um, we've grown uh, to become uh, three markets, uh, trading all kinds of uh, asset classes. Uh, so we have the main equity market. Uh, then we have what we call the alternative market, GATS. And then we recently created uh, the bond market uh, called GFIM, Ghana Fixed Income Bond Market. Uh, the market capitalization is about 14 billion uh, US dollars uh, as we speak. Uh, we have uh, 41 uh, securities uh, listed on the main and the uh, alternative market. Um, when you look at uh, the bond market, uh, there's a new one coming up. Uh, we have about 130 bonds uh, listed. Um, on that market. Um, the key thing about market is that we are fully electronic, uh, straight through process right from trading all the way to uh, depository. Um, in terms of uh, uh, performance, uh, it's not done badly in the past years. Uh, this year has not been too good because of what happened uh, to the economic environment, but it's beginning to improve. Uh, we're hoping to see the market doing well uh, going to the future. In terms of our future plans, um, we tend to consolidate and grow the bond market. Uh, because that's key for our government, it's key for our economy, especially when it comes to infrastructure and other long-term uh, projects. Then at the same time, uh, we're looking at how to improve liquidity sources on our market and getting more uh, equities uh, listed on our market. So are the markets modeled off of what we see in the U.S. or European markets in terms of regulation and um, how the you know, market infrastructure itself? To explain to us, is, is it essentially modeled the same way U.S. markets are, sure. like off the SEC rules, are they, are they yes, similar to that? Of course. Well, uh, the Mauritius stock market uh, is very well regulated and its regulation is based on, on uh, international standards. For example, the Stock Exchange of Mauritius is a member, full-fledged member of the World Federation of Exchanges where you see exchanges like NASDAQ and other large exchanges and which is a standard setter uh, in, uh, in the world of exchanges. So basically what this means is that our exchange uh, is well regulated in accordance with the requirements of the World Federation of Exchanges and its operational framework is very much in line with what you see in international standards. As I mentioned, we are fully electronic uh, an investor sitting here in the US, if he wants to follow what's going on on the Mauritian exchange, he can do that real time online right. and if he wants to invest in our market, he just has to open an account with a stockbroker in Mauritius and then just send his orders online and the orders will get executed. So we are very much integrated within the world financial uh, services system and our operational standards, our regulatory framework is very much aligned with what you see in the US right. or in the larger jurisdictions of the world. Right, and then you'll expect more growth too as the economy is diversified. So that's certainly going to add more listings to your markets. Sure, hopefully. sure. So. When it comes to Ghana, I mean, um, just like any other stock market you find in a developed country, principles are the same. 
Uh, we also have a good regulatory framework regulated by SEC, just like you have mm -hmm. in uh, the U.S. That's the Securities and Exchange uh, Commission. Uh, the SEC itself is a self-regulatory organization with members, um, and, and we intend to demutualize and become um, uh, a company limited by shares into the future. So in terms of regulation and uh, regulatory framework, everything is just like what pertains in other uh, jurisdictions. And year upon year, we try to improve um, our regulatory framework in order to boost confidence in the market. Well, those are the, those are the two key words right now, liquidity and transparency. That's what traders want to hear. So yeah. it's exciting to hear how these are certainly growing for both of your respective yeah. exchanges. Thank you for joining us Thank today you. at it's the NASDAQ pleasure. market site. And safe travels and Thank welcome you. back it's to New pleasure. York City. Thank you. From the NASDAQ market site in Times Square, I'm Jill Malandrino for Facebook's NASDAQ Live and for The Voice of America. Doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor.